Shalom family, all praises to the Most High. I want to first start this study off with 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2. And it says, Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. What's up? What's up? What's up? All praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Barakatah. To all my family and friends, my Mishkapa, much Ahava to you all. I hope you all had a blessed week. Thank you for tuning into my channel. Please make sure y'all subscribe, hit that subscribe button, tune in. Today I'm just gonna get into it. I want to talk about polygamy versus monogamy. And um, I first want to start off with saying everybody in my family, from my mom's side to my dad's side, they have been in a monogamous relationship. They've stayed monogamous throughout the years. Um, my parents have been together for almost 50 years. My mom has always been submissive to my dad. You know, my father has always led and my mother has always um, followed. So I want to talk about monogamy versus polygamy and why me and my husband are, we're standing firm on a monogamous marriage. Uh, me and my husband, we've been together for 11 years. Um, it'll make nine years that we have been married. All praises to the most high. He gets all that esteem, all that glory, because if it wasn't for him, let me tell y'all something. And it took us a while to get it right. When you get married, you're getting to know somebody for the rest of your life. So you got to learn how to love that person and learn to know them and get to know their, their, um, triggers and just learn them, you know, what their love languages are, what their, um, where they're at emotionally, you know, uh, we have to learn each other and just really deal with it because love conquers all, you know, and love comes from the most high. So if you don't know the father, our Elohim of the book of the Torah of the Bible, you're not going to know how to love. Some people say that, um, men are the father made men to be polygamous. And my first go-to is the book, the Bible, the foundation, the eternal word of the most high. Where is that in the scripture where the most high made the men of Zion to be polygamous? The father did not make men to be polygamous. That's my first thing. And I need somebody to show me, to those who disagree with me, show me where the father said I made the men of Zion or any nation of people to be polygamous. You know, so like I said, I'm not going to speak on anybody else. What y'all do, that's what y'all do. But the belief system that me and my husband stand firm on is monogamy. My dad is my teacher. He has taught me and my sisters for years on out. And he's, he's still a teacher, but he's also learning. He's very humble to learning. We're all still learning. No one knows it all. You know, um, he's always told me how to go to the beginning which is the first fruits and first fruits is important it's the same way if um when you wake up in the morning first fruits you give praise and honor to the most high. i don't know about y'all but i do you know the father is first nothing comes first not my phone not the tv N nothing not my kids before i even open up my eyes most of the time i'm praying before i even open up my eyes when i'm woke thank you father y'all for waking me up this morning and giving me another day i give this day to you i give you all honor and praise and glory which is due to your name thank you for protecting me thank you for loving me thank you for your law statutes and commandments and thank you that i will endure Whew, i just caught that uh holy ruach hako dash honey so genesis chapter 2 verse 18 first fruits in the beginning then yahweh said it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Did he say I will make him helpers fit for him? Keep that in mind because words are very important. So he made one woman for Adam. And mind you, how many ribs did Yahweh take out of Adam to make Eve? One rib. He did not take two, three, four, five ribs. Because first of all, Adam probably wouldn't have had no ribs left. <laughs> That's just a joke. The father can do whatever he wants. So he took that one rib from Adam and that was it. He said a helper. So he teaches us how to live according to his word. He wants us to have abundant life. You know, he wants us to endure. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to break these generational curses. Genesis 2, 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. It doesn't say cleave unto his wives. <sighs> cleave unto his wife 
and they shall be one flesh. Okay? The man shall cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. That's the only way that you're one flesh. Because two plus two in the most high, in the most high's eye, it equals one. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 17 says, Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. I can name so many of the prophets and the kings in the scriptures that had multiple wives and the wives turned them away from the father. It's either that or they were living in sin. And they were dealing with things that should, that they should not have been dealing with. They fell. And the father could not catch them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's another story because I can get into that as well. The men that had multiple wives and the things that happened to them. Now, precept to Genesis chapter 2 verse 24 when it says, A man shall cleave unto his wife and the two shall be one flesh. Um, Matthew chapter 19 verse 4. Now... Matthew chapter 19, verse 4 says, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? Not male and females. He created a man and a woman. And for a man and a woman to be together, he created monogamy. That's what he intended for us to live a monogamous life. In my Bible, this is what I have. It may be a little different from y'all's. Um, I try not to read KJV because KJV is mistranslated. Um, it is not the closest thing to the word of the most high. Uh, you can agree with me. You can disagree. You can agree to disagree, but the KJV is not it. All right. Sons and daughters of Zion. Matthew 19, 4 says, and he answered and said unto them, have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his woman and they too shall be one flesh and they too which is one man and one woman that's the doctrine the belief that we have for monogamy because it says it right here i shared draw three scriptures which was genesis the first scripture genesis chapter 2 verse 18 genesis chapter 2 verse 24 and a precept to genesis chapter 2 verse 24 is matthew chapter 19 verse 4 and he specifies he says that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female for this cause shall one man, a man, shall leave his mother, his father and mother, and shall cleave to his woman, his woman. <laughs> and they too shall be one flesh. One plus one in the most highest eyes equals one. So y'all, this is why me and my husband are keeping it monogamous. My husband ain't trying to deal with no multiple women in the first place anyway. And there's an argument where a lot of people, the first thing they say is, well, the 12 tribes was made by multiple women, by polygamy. And I understand that. But for me, my understanding of the scriptures, the reason why the 12 tribes was made with multiple women is because that's just what happened. Not only that, it's because it was during that time. The Most High always has a plan. He has things ordained. He has things set in place to happen in the way that he wants it to happen. You know what I'm saying? That's an argument. You know, in a lot of kings in the Bible, they did a lot of things that was wrong. They did a lot of things that was dirty. But the Father, he saw it, saw them just and righteous. Because they repented, because they cried out and said, Father, forgive me. Allow me to turn from my ways and, and honor you and please you and do what's right. You know, David in the whole book of Psalms, he pleaded with the Father. He confessed his faults. You know, he came to the Father and said, forgive me. 
allow me to do what's pleasing unto you. You know, and we know what David did in the scriptures. He was it was dirty what he did to uh gain him another wife. So the father does things in the scriptures, it's for a reason. He's doing that. And he has a purpose to fulfill. That's my take on the 12 tribes and why they were made the way they were. Um, there are scriptures that people argue about where it says, let me see if I can look it up. And y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, where the father was saying how, if you take another wife, then you must do this. You must do that. So, um, you know, the father gave us a free will and that's something he'll never take from us. That's why we cause things to happen in our lives to happen in our lives. We make the choices and decisions. But the thing is, the father is the author of our life. You know, he allows things to happen. He knows what's going to happen before it even happens. You know, so um, I question the father sometimes. I'm like, father, yeah, why? Come in, babe. I'm doing a video. Hey, honey. <laughs> oh, shalom. Shalom, babe. <laughs> Give me a kiss. Are you doing a live? No, I'm just recording. Mm, hey, baby, I missed you. You okay? Mm -hmm. I like your little nose ring. Thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, Um, the scripture where the father said, if he takes on another wife, then you must do this. And you cannot basically abandon that wife. And you must give her... Um the same inheritance that you give your, you know, y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't want to get deep into that. And the father said that because it's basically like, if you're going to do this, do it this way. My interpretation of the scriptures is that the father did not ordain polygamy. He did not ordain for us to be polygamous. You know, do what you do. If y'all enjoy your sister wives, you want to have a sister wife and you want to share your husband, fine, do you. But... I'm standing firm on monogamy because of these scriptures. And I share this video to give my understanding that the father revealed to me, you know, and my spirit sits well with it for years. I, like I was telling you in the beginning, my parents been together for 50 years. I've seen a monogamous relationship my entire life with my aunts and my uncles. My aunts and my uncles are still together with their husband and wives, you know, so I come from a family like that. I'm not going to sit up here and change my marriage. My husband's not going to change his marriage because we found out who we are in the truth. And now people people want to talk about um, polygamy and be like, well, your husband should take on another wife. Hell no. It's not up to y'all to tell us what to do in our marriage. No. I'm not sharing my husband and my husband only wants me. And because of the scriptures and what these scriptures that I shared says, because in the beginning... This is what the father ordained for us to be. This is what he intended. It's the same way I always say how he intended for us to eat fruits and vegetables. He intended for us to eat from the ground. But because of the fall of Adam and Eve, they were doing any and everything. And the father was like, okay, well, if y'all going to be eating these animals, this is the animal that you can eat. You can eat all these clean animals, but all these unclean animals, y'all cannot touch these animals. He always intended for us to do things a certain way. And once things broke and fell and then all this sin happened and, you know, all this Sodom and Gomorrah, all this crap. After uh, everything, these are the things that happened. And the first person that decided to take on two wives, I believe, was Lamech. That's all I'm going to say. People always say there's a righteous way to do it. I understand that. I have an understanding of that. If you want to be in a righteous uh, polygamous marriage, that's you. Do you? But I'm explaining why me and my husband stand firm on our 11-year monogamous relationship. And it's going to stay like that until we die. Our foundation is the word of the Most High. We stand firm on how the Most High intended things to be in the beginning. You know, and some people believe in the Old Testament. Some people believe in the New Testament. We believe in the whole book. You know what I'm saying? And um, like I was about to get into, the father gave us a free will. He's not going to take that free will from us. You know, he didn't He didn't condemn these men that was taking on multiple women because he gave them a free will. And he said, well, if you're going to do it this way, then do it like this. If you're going to take on another wife, do it this way. You know what I'm saying? If y'all going to eat animals... Eat these animals, but don't eat these. 
Y'all have to have an understanding of the scriptures. That's what you want to do. But don't get on me and my husband about us being monogamous. You know, I've had some brothers, this one brother, he be in my post talking about um, uh, Abraham and Moses and all this other stuff because I had made a post saying, um, my husband tells me all the time, you know, you're the only one I want. You're the only one I need. And I love hearing that. And I know that his actions speak louder than what he says, what he tells me. He going to comment under there and talk about basically all the children and the wives that, that I forget who he stated. But I deleted that comment so quick. Don't come under my post trying to change our minds about things, trying to change me and my husband's views on polygamy and monogamy. No, it's not going to happen. Like I said, I understand thing people say there's a righteous way to be polygamous. Hey, that's you. I'm talking about me and my husband and our marriage and what we learn from the knowledge of the truth of the scriptures. And I was going to get into the other scriptures, but I'm not. It's no point into in doing that. I'm, I said what I said. And that's one thing about me. I'm going to say what I say. And that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? And it's not personal. But it is personal. All praise to the Most High for his word. I'm thankful that you guys tuned in today. Um, I'm thinking about turning my comment section on. I don't know. I just don't like dealing with people that disagree, people that want to be contentious and argue this because the scriptures told us not to do that. So I turn my comment section off because I don't need nobody to be in my comment section. You know, I got one head. That's my husband. You know, and he listens and follows the most high. He leads, I follow. You know, and like I always say, the father gives us the discernment of the scriptures. He gives it to us both. You know, he gives his word to Jacob. Thank you all for tuning in. Please follow my Instagram at Yael for Yasharel. Um, my backup page is Lovely Brew. And my business page is, what is my business page? <laughs> Lee.Productions. What is my business page? Oh my God. So thank you, Father Yah, for this day that you've given us. We give you all the praise and honor and glory which is due to your name. Thank you for those who watched and who are open to uh, have understanding of the scriptures. We love you, Father Yah. We thank you for your law, statutes, and commandments and for choosing us, Father. Because if, if it wasn't for you, I don't know where we would be at. You know, thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your love and your sufficient grace. And we give you the highest praise and we say hallelujah. In Yahweh Shai Hamashiach's name we pray, I mean. All right, y'all. I will see y'all next time. Much love. Barakazah. Ahava. Shalom. Oh, my God.